And I'd like you to think about what your own journey has been like thus far. I, I know that some of you are at various stages of your own investigations, but what is research to you? And I think that's a fundamental question that we need to be clear about. Why are you doing what you're doing in the first place? The topic that you've chosen, how did that come about? Was it the influence of a faculty? Was it through a course or a module that you took earlier? Was it a reading <coughs> that impressed you and inspired you to delve into further on your own? Was it your own teaching? I think this is important for us to, to bear in mind right from the start. One of the things that we have tried to impress on our teachers is to see research on a much broader level. Interestingly enough, the moment you mention research, how do you think teachers would react in general? Just make a guess. Some of you have been working with teachers yourself. I'm quite sure some of you are nodding your heads, your informants, your subjects come from our school system. How do they view research? I mean, honestly, generally, do they look on it in a positive way from your own experience? No. Yes? No? For some of you? No? Okay, how many of you have found teachers who are pretty positive in working with you and collaborating with people that you know? I mean, just by a show of hands. They are pretty positive. They may not know everything, but they are curious. They are interested to find out more. Okay, a couple of your <laughs> thanks, Rita, that's encouraging. Okay, and this is the same reaction that we get as well, that not everybody fully understands or appreciates what it really means to be engaged in research. And in fact, one of the things that I've been trying to do in engaging with teachers in school-based work is to actually try and avoid using the word research altogether. In my recent encounter in working with schools, what I've told a team of teachers is that I'm really here just to help your teachers help your <coughs> students. We want to help your students learn better. And I don't think any teacher would deny wanting to know more about how they can help, help their students learn better, learn more effectively, and for them perhaps to modify or adjust their own pedagogic strategies. So as far as possible, we try and avoid using the term research. This framework by Campbell and McNamara has helped us to a certain extent. And if you look at it, the broader perspective of research sits in within this whole sphere of what we call inquiry. And in particular, because we are working with teachers in the school, it's practitioner inquiry. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Situated within this wider sphere of inquiry is where you have a more focused area called research, as it were, that practitioners engage in. And what do you notice pops up of practitioner research? Something that's very familiar to the ground, action research. That's something that many of our teachers begin with. For those who have their first initiation into research, that's probably the first kind of study that they are engaged in. And we, sit, and we see this quite often in many of the schools, and it's growing. There's a developing community now. Um, lesson study is something that they are very familiar with, and that's one example of action research. <coughs> so when we talk about inquiry to our schools, what we are doing in MOE is taking a broader perspective. Essentially, it's a conceptual and linguistic umbrella term. So here we're referring to that wide range of different kinds of studies, research modes, forms, genres, and purposes. And we feel that when we talk about inquiry as a teacher in investigating into his or her own practice in school, it tends to sit down better with the practitioners. And under this huge umbrella of inquiry, we, we actually have a very wide spectrum of studies. So pedagogical kinds of research and investigation will come in as well. So would curriculum studies. So would narrative inquiry, for instance. 
a self-study, a self-monitoring kind of reflection <coughs> and investigation that they are just starting out with, that would come under a form of inquiry as well. Where practitioner research is concerned, if you remember, it sits within that wider sphere of inquiry. This is where it's a more focused investigation of the practice with a very specific view to evaluating some aspect of what they are doing in school or some aspect of enhancement or improving their current practice. Action research, as I mentioned earlier, this is what many of our teachers are very familiar with. So it's a form of self-reflective inquiry. Uh, lesson study that many of them are engaged in. This is the beginning for many teachers in getting their feet wet when it comes to doing school-based inquiry. <coughs> so essentially the focus is on the social situation and the view is to try and improve or enhance the quality of the action within. As you think about your own research and as you engage with teachers, you might want to think about where your own study falls under. And of course, we acknowledge that there are overlapping interse intersections all the time, and it's not such a clean and neat uh, distinction from one to the other. But what we have found useful is to try and impress on teachers that what they are really doing is a nature of inquiry where those who are involved investigate what is working well for student learning and achievement and importantly why so that whatever is positive is enhancing the student's learning can be continued but at the same time to be mindful of what is not working well and why so it can be changed we are very mindful that very often the teachers tend to focus on what is not working well. That very often when data comes to you, I don't know whether you run into that kind of situation as well, where you begin to look for what does not work well, where the gaps are, where the problems are, where the tension is. I feel, in looking at some of the data that's coming in from the schools, there's quite a bit that we don't know about what is working well. Some of my colleagues at Alice are now embarking on an inquiry of themselves. What is it that makes an effective EL teacher, the attributes of a good EL teacher, have we really understood? What is it that makes someone more impactful in the classroom, more effective with the students than somebody else? So I think it's something that we want to impress on our teachers. It's not just a deficit model, unfortunately, that many Singaporeans tend to go for. We start zeroing in on the defects, on the problems, on the constraints, on the limitations, but also to focus on what's working well. And I think this is where NIE has done a great job in kicking uh, that off for us with some of the studies that, that have been going on in CRPB. Dennis was sharing with us the work that's been going on in RGS. I think that's a wonderful platform for us to delve further into, to look at some of the practices that have worked, particularly for high ability learners. <coughs>